Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to yet another Destiny video and today we're actually going to be having a discussion in regards to the patch notes that Bungie released a few days ago and that pertains to uh, the update that we're supposed to see next month. Now, I'm not really going to talk about the PvE changes, I'm just going to focus on the PvP stuff because obviously I'm more, I'm more known for like my PvP content in Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 so I'm going to stick to what I'm good at and uh, not worry about PvE too much but I will say the PvE changes overall were pretty good if you want more info on that kind of stuff then other people out there definitely uh, can cover that more thoroughly than me but in the background here where you're gonna be watching is just some uh, content with the lens rifle before when it was broken and so much fun to use I haven't actually used it since then I might have to give it a go but anyways that's what you guys are seeing in the background there's not gonna be much structure to this I'm just gonna go off here no script I'm um, just gonna have a little discussion so here we go so we're gonna start off with the respawn and revive section of the patch notes uh, they're reducing quick play response to two seconds and then for survival and countdown they're being reduced to seven I would imagine that also applies to trials of the nine and then you also don't lose your revive tokens on death which uh, I didn't initially have too much of a problem with um, I, I don't really know this one the revive tokens on death for trials and competitive not too sure if it's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing uh, it's definitely gonna speed up you know the, the rounds a bit and the gunplay um, and there might be more like clutch opportunities so I guess that's kind of a good thing they're reverting basically back to d1 so that's never a bad thing and then for quick play being reduced to two seconds for the respawn I never actually understood why it was four or five seconds I thought that was way too long especially if the name of the game mode is quick play like that to me didn't make any sense so these are all welcoming changes uh, i i still think survival and cool uh and and countdown are fine seven seconds i think that's that's probably like perfect uh, then we're going to talk about power ammo changes because this is actually uh, something that is pretty big in terms of how it's going to impact the gunplay and stuff like that. So power ammo respawn timers were adjusted across the board which means uh, they were reduced basically for everything. For iron banner they were reduced by 50%, for quick play reduced by 30% which is good. Uh, survival has been reduced by 30% and countdown by 25%. So overall we're going to be seeing power ammo pop up on the map more often which is is nice uh, right now there's not really that much opportunity for power ammo especially because only one person on your team can get it instead of d1 where everybody got it ammo counts have been adjusted in relation to these timers and in relation to weapon type that's not really that important uh, basically all of I think every power ammo weapon got a buff other than swords and rockets which were slightly nerfed. Now I don't know why swords were nerfed necessarily, I think swords were totally fine because you had to have skill to use them. You couldn't just run around and chase people like an idiot, people would <laughs> team shot you and kill you if you were done with it. Um, rockets I understand, you know, they're, you know, they're overused right now so a little bit of a nerf. I guess isn't a bad thing and then enemy players now drop their power ammo when they die this is really cool uh, there was a video that I'll actually play on screen right now where uh, it's basically a play test for, from Bungie specifically this is not live right now but he killed somebody and then what he did right after is actually he had to hold um, square for PlayStation to pick it up or obviously like E on PC and you have to hold square to pick up ammo that he drops it's just really cool it's like a power brick um, very similar to I think D1, I'm pretty sure you could pick up power ammo from people when they died. Eventually they phased that out, but early on in D1, that was actually a thing which was really awesome. One change that's actually really controversial right now is something that Bungie did in regards to team shooting. Now obviously, team shots were definitely a problem. Everybody who's played D2 is like, yeah, I'm sick and tired of basically getting melted in a 1v4 situation. If you're up against the 1v2, you basically cannot win if it's a straight on gun on gun gunfight. Uh, as in D1, you totally could have. You could have clutched a 1v2 or a 1v3 if you were really good. But in this game, it, it doesn't seem like you can do that if you're on just a straight up gunfight because the time to kill is so long. So what they did in regards to team shotting is they actually uh, took off 
the radar from competitive and Trials of Osiris or Trials of the Nine. Now, I've seen some videos, I've, you know, read some Twitter posts, I've been on Reddit a little bit, and the community is kind of 50 50 on it. There's a part of the community that's like, yeah, this is going to make it more competitive and it's pretty awesome. And there's another half that are like, dude, this is going to make it so boring and campy. I think I'm actually on this side where I think this change might be pretty good. Now, the reason why is actually very simple. I think if you take out the radar, even though there's going to be people that are playing maybe a little bit slower or campy, I still think that a skilled player and a skilled team with good communication is going to win the matches against a team that straight up camps. If you die over and over to the same person camping, he's not necessarily the bad player. I think you are the bad player if you keep falling for the same crap over and over. So I initially had a problem with trials being way too easy. There were people who had no business going flawless. And by that, I mean in Destiny 1, they could not go flawless to save their lives. But in Destiny 2, they were doing it no problem. I think this is actually going to raise the skill gap and make it harder for people to go flawless in Trials of the Nine, and that is desperately needed. Right now, it's basically a handout. Whoever wants it, go flawless. So I definitely welcome this change. Is it going to work as they say and as we expect it to, to work out? Maybe not, but I think this is a good idea for them to at least try. If it doesn't work, in the future they can kind of just turn the radar back on. Really not that big of a deal. They're also making tons of subclass changes. One thing in specific that I want to talk about is kind of like the mobility and the jumps that we have. The Titans are actually getting something similar to Titan skating back. We haven't seen any footage of this just yet, so we don't know how it's going to work. But apparently, Titans are going to have some really awesome jumps. Uh, mobility stats have been kind of just buffed across the board for all classes. We're going to be moving quickly. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty damn awesome. Also, supers, I believe, uh, some of them, like, the striker and the arc strider are going to be running quicker now which is nice i mean that just speeds up the whole flow of crucible and i definitely welcome that change the arc strider is going to have faster attack and dodge animations that's good that's going to increase the skill gap increase uh, increase the range of all attacks as well pretty damn good shoulder charge changes are being reverted allowing shoulder charge to be used as a movement mode once again so basically you'll be able to do that d1 thing where you get a shoulder charge kind of mid-air and then start like doing your titan skate so that's really freaking awesome i'm hyped about that i might just have to use the titan once again because that was really fun to use back in like the taken king days uh dawn blade is getting a ton of stuff that's being improved as well uh basically the one that's very very important is remove all in-air accuracy penalties while strift uh swift strike is active so that means when you're gliding in place with a warlock you will have perfect in-air accuracy i can already envision some crazy sniper plays being made and i will definitely you can bet that i'll be trying out that combo right there and trying to go for some nasty shots because again sniping is what i loved in d1 and i will continue to do that in d2 because um we haven't got there yet but snipers are getting buffed invisibility on dodge basically you know night stalkers are getting a little bit nerfed um Let's be honest here, guys. It was pretty AIDS. I mean, when you ran into teams of four people with um, <laughs> the Shade Step boots on where they would like take out your radar and they'd also go invisible after shade stepping that was so aids your aim assist would go off them and it was just terrible so i'm glad that they're doing something to kind of balance out hunters i'm pretty happy with that supers recharge faster for everybody supers now recharge one minute and 40 seconds faster cooldown reduction of 25 percent that's very significant 25 percent doesn't sound like a lot but one minute and 40 definitely sounds like a lot so expect instead of getting one super a game you're going to be getting two two supers a game basically that's like standard and then what i assume is that if you're actually a very good player and you're doing well in the match you'll be able to maybe get three if you're like going straight ham maybe you'll get four but i don't know about that um i've gotten two supers a game many times in d2 so i'm expecting to now get three and if i push it maybe four is possible one thing they didn't actually mention in this post is that in addition to just the supers outright being faster, you get more super energy per kill now as well. So you'll be able to get your supers faster than that. So that's really awesome. Mods that reduce grenade, melee, and class ability cooldowns have been buffed to allow for double the speed of cooldowns. Very much needed. We do not get our abilities fast enough. It just feels like we're constantly waiting for them in Destiny 2, which is nice. Again, all of these changes are, are pretty damn good. Pulse Rifles are getting tons and tons of buffs basically across the board. Uh, so Pulse Rifles are now going to be... 
I want to say OP because, you know, they're, they're, they're reducing a lot of things in pulse rifles that made them bad. So, I mean, they're, they're increasing the precision multiplier, the base damage, the rate of fire for some of them. So, um, pulse rifles is something you guys should definitely look out for. Scout rifles are getting a little bit of an increase in the base damage for the high end, high impact scouts. That was needed because in my opinion, the worst archetype in the game was uh, high impact, long range scout rifles like the Jade Rabbit. Those were so crap in D2. So I'm pretty happy those changes are coming. And then, uh, hand cannons are also um being increased and, and buffed believe it or not in pvp and in pve so increase ads accuracy on consoles increase hit fire that is very much welcoming uh, on pc they are really good from the hip but on console they're trash so i definitely welcome that change Sidearms are getting buffed across the board as well, increased PvE and PvE stuff, ADS accuracy, hit fire accuracy, uh, more inventory size, minimum ranges being increased, tons of stuff there. SMGs, believe it or not, are actually getting buffed. Um, increased inventory size, allowing for more reserve ammo to be stored. That is pretty badass. I am actually getting to the point where I'm running out of magazines with my Antio because I'm just straight gunning people with it. Um, all I do is just abuse a kill clip. It's my favorite perk and my favorite weapon in the game. So more ammo. I'm pretty happy about that. Linear fusion rifle. Oh my god, this thing is just ass on a different level. Thank god they are increasing aim assist, increasing, uh, increasing precision multiplier, uh, basically buffing for PvE, reducing flinch, great stuff there. Shotgun is being... Uh, I, I don't know I don't know why, but shotgun's being buffed. Let's not do, go too crazy with that bungee. You know, we don't want uh, the Felwinters back in the game, but it looks like they're only doing a few minor things, like uh, the aim assist is getting a little bit better, and then the rest are PvE changes. Snipers! Finally, we're here at Snipers. Guys, I was expecting everything to be changed with snipers i was expecting massive buffs but it doesn't look like they're going to be crazy i mean this is definitely a step forward in the right direction uh some of the stuff is that increased pve damage for all snipers increased precision multiplier increased aim assist i didn't have a problem with the aim assist i had a problem with two other things that i'll mention in a second they also have increased inventory size which is nice hopefully we get like six mags or sorry six shots of uh from a power ammo brick instead of just four Increase aim assist is nice as well for PvP, but my problem was flinch. Flinch is so AIDS for snipers, and unfortunately, we're gonna have to wait two months for flinch to be addressed on snipers because the, apparently there's some really, really nasty bug right now that's affecting all snipers. And um, I also believe that the reticle will no longer sway and move up and down when you're moving left and right, which is uh, a nice change. Grenade launchers, increased blast radius, um, assault rifles, decreased range and aim assist stats for precision autos, such as the Uriel's gift, base damage is not changed that makes me pretty damn upset i mean we're kind of starting to get back to this tendency where oh when something's dominant we're gonna nerf it and we're gonna buff everything else they should have kept the uriels and autos the same because right now they feel totally fine i mean they don't feel overpowered in any way shape or form just buff everything else which is what they're doing now i have a funny feeling that the Uriel's Gift and the other autos in the same archetype are going to be a little bit underwhelming and that really grinds my gears. Hopefully that's not the case though. Tons of perks are also getting um, buffed mostly for PvE but there's a few of them like Rampage that are actually um, increased duration which is also going to affect PvP which is very very nice. Um, and then there's you know mods reworked they're going to be messing with that that's coming in a future update. Invisibility stuff like I mentioned they have a lot of changes there. Um, you're only going to lose aim assist when you're in the animation of rolling not afterwards when you're invisible which is very very nice. There's going to be a lot of very cool things happening there. And uh, yeah, I think that is basically it for all of the patch notes. Obviously, I went over some stuff very quickly, um, but overall, guys, I think this is pretty damn awesome. For me, the main thing I was focusing on is getting supers quicker, getting to use our grenades, abilities, all that stuff quicker, the movement speed and overall gunplay being quicker 
more smoother that's all happening and a few other things that i definitely wanted was more power ammo more sniper shots and buffing snipers across the board and on top of that we're going to be getting 6v6 iron banner so those things in combination with each other should make for fun gameplay and hopefully fun videos where i can just go back to my roots where i'm sniping and doing live commentaries and going for like breakers and shit like that that would be a lot of fun and uh yeah that's basically it guys i think overall this Patch seems pretty good on paper if they can actually do the right thing and um, turn this patch on paper into a good patch in the actual game, then I think we're, we're, we're off to a good start. They might just resurrect Destiny with this patch right here in terms of PvP. But that is going to do it for the video, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, of course, of this video. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more daily Destiny and Fortnite content. Have a great day, and I'll see you all later. Peace.